Good morning, people. Watch Woman 65. Lisa Boyce here. Um, before I read this article off of uh, Zero Hedge about the coronavirus, I want to read a passage of scripture in Romans 5, 9. It's a small passage. It says, much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. I wanted to give you all that bit of scripture. It says, much more than being being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So that should give you just a little bit of encouragement. I'm going to read this article that I got uh, <clears throat> this morning off of Zero Hedge. And it is talking about the coronavirus. And it's saying here that all hospital beds in the U.S. will be filled. All hospital beds in the U.S. will be filled by patients, with patients, by about May 8th due to coronavirus. And this is the analysis. It says a sobering analysis of how coronavirus is likely to impact the U.S. healthcare system suggests that hospitals will be quickly overwhelmed with patients and that all available beds will be filled by around May 8th if the virus tracks with Italy's figures and 10% of patients require an intensive care unit. This is not good. And that's why I wanted to start out with that scripture. To give you some hope. Because like I said, I I report this. Even though it's negative. I have to give you the truth about this virus. This virus is nothing. It is nothing to joke with. This virus is here to stay. And it's a foundation for the Antichrist. This is the foundation for the Antichrist right here. It says, um, of note, the Straits Times reported last week that thousands of people were waiting for hospital beds in South Korea as the disease surges. Liz Spitz, a PhD in biology and the Associate Director of Science and Technology for the Good Food Institute, laid out her concerns in a lengthy Twitter thread on Friday. I'm going to link the article, and that thread will be in there, so you can read that. Um, it says that we can, ex we can expect that we'll continue to see doubling of cases every six days. And this is typical doubling, doubling time across several epidemiological studies. And here's what that means. It means actual cases. Confirmed cases may appear to rise faster in the short term due to test rollouts. It says we're looking at about 1 million U.S. cases by the end of April. 2 million by May 5th, 4 million by May 11th, and so on. Exponentials are hard to grasp, but this is how they go. As the healthcare system, hey, cut it out. As the healthcare system begins to saturate under this caseload, it will become increasingly hard to detect, track, and contain new transmission chains. In absence of extreme interventions, this likely won't slow significantly until hitting uh, less than 1% of susceptible population. What does a caseload of this size mean for healthcare systems? We'll examine just two factors, hospital beds and masks among many, many other things that will be impacted. The U.S. has about 
hospital beds per 1,000 people. With a population of 330 million, this is 1 million beds. At any given time, 65% of those beds are already occupied. This leaves about 330,000 beds available nationwide, perhaps a bit fewer this time of year with regular flu season. Not to mention the cases that regular cases besides the flu. Let's trust Italy's numbers and assume that about 10% of the cases are serious enough to require hospitalization. Keep in mind that for many patients, hospitalization lasts for weeks. In other words, turnover will be very slow as beds fill with coronavirus patients. By this estimate, by about May 8th, all open hospital beds in the U.S. will be filled. And like I said, that's not just including coronavirus people. That's including the flu and other illnesses. This says nothing, of course, about whether these beds are suitable for isolation of patients with a highly infectious virus. If we're wrong by a factor of two regarding the uh, fraction of severe cases, that only changes the timeline of bed saturation for six days in either direction. If 20% of the cases require hospitalization, we run out of beds by May 2nd. This is disturbing, to say the least. If only 5% of the cases require it, we can make, make it until May 14th. 2.5% gets us to May 20th. This, of course, assumes that there is no uptick in demand for beds from other non-coronavirus cases, which seems like a dubious assumption. As healthcare uh, systems become increasingly burdened, uh, diagnosis shortages, etc., people with chronic conditions that are normally well managed may find themselves slipping into severe states of medical distress requiring intensive care and hospitalization. But let's ignore that for now. All right, so that's beds. Now mask. Hmm. Feds say we have a normal stockpile of 12M N95 masks and 30M surgical masks, which are not ideal for better than nothing. There are about 18 million healthcare workers in the U.S. Let's assume 6 million healthcare workers are working on any given day. This is likely an underestimate as most people work most days of the week. But again, I'm playing conservative at every turn. As coronavirus cases saturate virtually every state and county, which seems likely to happen any day now, it will seem irresponsible for all healthcare workers not to wear a mask. These healthcare workers would burn through N95 stockpile in two days. If each healthcare worker got only one mask per day, this is insane. One day, one per day would either, would neither uh, sanitary nor pragmatic, though this would indeed what we saw in Wuhan with healthcare workers collapsing on their shifts from dehydration because they were trying to avoid changing their uh, suits as they cannot be reused. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a minute, and I'm going to let you all know something. Um, like I said the other day, this, this disease is not stopping. It's getting worse by the hour, it seems like. The numbers are not right. The numbers are much higher. We got, um, I think they said 20 cases here in Ohio that have not tested yet. That have not, I think they, they're under investigation is what they're saying. Every state's going to be hit with this. Okay. That's the bottom line. Every state is going to be hit with this. 
this we we're believing for the rapture of the church because like i said in the past this thing is being held back and i do believe by the restrainer that's mentioned in first thessalonians or second thessalonians when this thing when we are gone the only one that's going to have the antidote and the and the cure for this thing is the antichrist this is prophecy for being fulfilled this is literally prophecy being fulfilled like i said earlier this this disease is the foundation for what's to come it's the foundation for what's to come now let me finish this because this is interesting how quickly could we ramp up production of new mask not very fast at all it says the vast majority are manufactured overseas almost all in china sorry about that even when manufactured here in the u.s the raw materials are predominantly from overseas again predominantly from it rhymes with china keep in mind that all countries go globally will be going through the exact same crisis and shortages simultaneously we can't force trade in our favor now consider how these two factors, bed and mask shortages, compound each other's severity. Full hospitals plus few masks plus healthcare workers running around between beds without proper uh, physician's uh, equipment equals a very, very bad mix. Healthcare workers are already getting infected even with a, access to full physician's equipment gear. In the face of uh, PPE limitations, this, this severe is only a matter of time, is only a matter of time. Healthcare workers will start dropping from the workforce for weeks at a time leading to a shortage of healthcare workers like I said in the past and like I told my husband if this thing is going to affect the healthcare workers even more they're not going to be able to withstand the load number one and they're not going to have enough equipment and this is globally this is not just in the United States this is globally healthcare workers will start dropping from the workforce leading to a shortage of healthcare workers that then further compounds both issues above we could go on and on about thousands of factors of ventilators which by the way speaking of ventilators well ventilators for patients but speaking of I thought of the air conditioning units and the ventilate and the venting units in the in the hospitals which by the way will be spreading more of this disease in the air but ventilators for patients even simple things like saline drop uh, drip bags see where this is going it's going to be bad it's getting bad now importantly i cannot stress enough that even he says that even if he's wrong even very wrong about core assumptions like percent of severe cases or current cases number it only changes the timeline by days or weeks at the most this is how exponential growth of an immu uh, immunology naive population works undeserved panic does no one any good but neither does ill-informed complacency is wrong to um, tell the public by saying only 2% will die. People aren't adequately uh, grasping the national and global systematic burden wrought by this swift moving disease. People aren't taking it serious at all. And it's the, it's the media's fault. That's why they're not taking it serious. 
because the media is lying to people about the numbers that are out there. Nothing in the last six weeks has uh, dampened the alarm in the slightest. To the contrary, we're seeing abject refusal of many countries to adequately respond or prepare. Of course, some of these estimates will be wrong, even substantially wrong. But I have no reason to think there'll be orders of magnitude wrong. Even if your personal risk of death is very, very low. Don't mock decisions like canceling events or closing workplaces as undue panic. These measures are the bare minimum we should be doing to try to shift the peak, to slow the rise in cases so that healthcare systems are less overwhelmed. Each day that we can delay an extra case is a big win for the healthcare systems. And yes, you really should prepare to buckle down for a bit. All services and supply chains will be impacted. So I'm going to leave the article in the description box. And they're saying that, of course, in May, everybody's going to basically have their air conditioner unit running like they do in Florida right now. And that's not going to help matters either. So I'm going to leave the article in the description box. Um, the healthcare workers, like I said, are going to be badly impacted by this. And it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. But like I said, this is just a, this is just a small percentage of what's going to happen in the tribulation period. And this is just an example of what's coming, and it's going to be worse. So in the meantime, I will bring you more. I'll be back on later this morning. Thank you.